Time to bring you all the latest on the coronavirus outbreak. We'll begin with some good news. In China, the number of new cases being reported has dramatically slowed to the point that yesterday there were more new cases in the UK than in China. Well, that's a hopeful sign for us. Yesterday, there were 46 new confirmed cases in the UK, bringing the total number of confirmed British cases to 319. England's chief medical officer has warned that anyone with a cold, flu or a fever is likely to soon be asked to stay at home in self-isolation but the NHS have warned about the amount of misinformation online. So, to help us sort the fact from the fiction now, we're joined by Dr Sarah and immunologist Dr Al Edwards. Welcome to both of you. It, it amazes me that, uh, that people exist that even think in the way that the ones who would have thought to set up a fake Twitter account um, posing as a hospital and posting inaccurate information about coronavirus. It's it, ast it astonishes me that they can even think thoughts like that. I know. I think um, there are lots of people out there that are going to do awful things, but we have to remember that that's why the government have made sure that all Google searches that are government-based go straight to the top. Good. So you just need to read those top information. So yeah. some of the questions that have been asked online that we've seen uh, is, is flu more dangerous than coronavirus? Um, so we know that uh, the flu has a mortality of 1%. Um, it's a infection that we know so much about. It's been around for millennia. But the coronavirus is new. We don't know that much about it. The World Health Organization say that the mortality rate's around 3.4%. Mm -hmm. But in the UK, modelling has suggested it's more like 1%, which is somewhat equivocal to that of the flu. But with the flu, we have vaccines, whereas we don't have a vaccine for the coronavirus, so it protects against the more vulnerable group of people. You say they're similar in some ways. So, yeah, so um, they are similar because they're both respiratory infections, so some of the symptoms will be similar with the coronavirus, particularly a cough and a fever. Um, I think another way of looking at it is they're both actually very serious viruses, uh, so they're both um, killer viruses. Over the millennia that we've been living with influenza, they've you know, influenza swept through the population and killed a lot of people. Um, we're hoping that we won't see as, as bad an outbreak with the coronavirus, but they're definitely equivalent. Mm, OK. Um, we've uh, also just heard, um, for anyone who's um, got any friends or family in Italy, that uh, British Airways has cancelled all flights to and from um, Italy. That's the, uh, that's the sort of latest uh, report. Um, other things that you hear people... Um, worried about and you we can tip over into hysteria mm. um, So um, can you get coronavirus from a cat or a dog is a question that's asked a lot We have no evidence to suggest that pets um, are a uh, source of transmission um, We of course keep saying just keep washing hands keep uh, you know hand hygiene and, and sanitization But at present there's no indication so, yeah, I would agree that um, although we can't say for certain that the virus doesn't infect cats and dogs, what we do know is that all of the cases that have been followed in China, there's always been a human-to-human -human contact that can be identified. So, as far as we can tell, it's spread from one person one to human another. To human. OK, what about uh, packages? A lot of people worried about receiving packages from China and that possibly that they may be infected. So, I think that's a really good question because, you know, we start to think about everyday behaviour and what might be risky. The really good news is this virus, like a lot of viruses, is very fragile outside the human body. Um, and actually, one of the things that kills it quite well is for it to dry out on something like paper. And that's why the advice is catch it, kill it, bin it, because a paper tissue will actually, surprisingly, be quite effective at killing that virus. And it'll be the same for packages. Again, as I said earlier, people get the infection from other people, not from um, the tube or from packages or parcels. Yeah. Mm. And okay. what, about, um, what about food? Um, well, food is... Um, we, we don't believe that you can catch it through transmission of um, food sources. Having said that, there have been some documentations of um, the virus being in stool samples, um, so that would mean that it's able to pass through um, to the faeces. Having said that, again, the primary way of catching it is through respiratory droplets and then touching hands, eyes um, and mouth rather than through food. Um, big question. We've been asking it lots in here. Can you get it twice? So... Um... This is the type of virus that we would expect. Once you've been infected, once you've cleared the virus, you'll have a very powerful immune response, an antibody response that will clear the virus. And that will protect you most likely from infection again. Having said that, it's that big uncertainty that because it's a new virus, we can't say for sure that nobody will ever will not get it twice. Mm -hmm. Um, but we would expect it to be similar to other infections where you only get it once and okay. then you're protected. Um, 
can you get it from sex? That's another question that's been asked. Uh, well, sex uh, itself, i.e. through a sexually transmitted infection, no, it's not a sexually transmitted infection, but it can be caught through close, direct contact. You're pretty close which to the person there at the time. Pretty close, I unless you're having sex it, through, yeah. like, a plastic sheet, it's, oh, which is not very sexy at all, um, then Shuts it's unlikely, off. yeah. Um, shaking hands? Should we be shaking hands? I mean, we didn't shake hands. We all sort of sat down. <laughs> you have that awkward, like, are we doing it? Are we not doing it thing? But can you shake someone's hand? So... The infection is spread is a respiratory infection. It's spread um, actually through your mouth and eyes and nose. So you won't get infected by touching something with the virus. But what you've got to think about is your hands. And I think maybe quite a lot of us are starting to think about that. How often during the day do you actually touch your face? Yeah. So the important thing is follow that hand hygiene advice. It's not just eating or you know, rubbing your eyes, but also applying makeup. It's a really good idea to wash your hands before doing that. So you won't catch it from. Um, shaking hands itself, but think about that hand hygiene. Yeah. And one of the other things, I just wanted to do this one, um, because uh, people have, once again, uh, we've seen this question asked, should I rinse my nose with saline and eat garlic? There's no evidence for either of those two things. Garlic is thought to be very healthy, it might be antimicrobial in its nature, but it will not stop you from getting coronavirus, nor will douching your nose. Can I ask a question then? If someone's having to isolate at home, does the rest of your family have to isolate with you? Because is there any point in that... Per if you've got somebody that's not very well and got a temperature in there thinking, and the doctor said, right, self-isolate, should you then or anyone who's come into contact in that home, is it like lockdown? So, you know, absolutely, that is the advice. Now, that will depend on the family setup. will depend where you're living. Maybe you're living in a flat share or something like that. It won't always be that straightforward. But... Um, it also goes back to that question about intimacy. Ideally, you stay in a separate bedroom, you use a separate bed, you use separate towels, ideally a separate bathroom, and, and just try and be really careful not to spread it onto your loved ones. So it won't always be possible, um, but that's the idea, is to try okay. and keep yourself to yourself. Thank you oh, very thank much. You both. Thank, thank you for you. the moment. Thank you.